Hello, and welcome back to Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding. I am Dr. Abstract, and if we go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com, scroll on down to the school there at the bottom, we are on Lesson 4. So if you're just arriving, this is your first time here, then you'll certainly want to check out the earlier lessons. There's a couple of videos for each lesson as well. We have had one video on abstraction. We had a more uh, abstract video on abstraction. We talked about abstract art. We went to the creativity framework and looked at the terms for abstraction. Basically, as you move up in a hierarchy, you get more abstract, more general. The commonality has been abstracted, and the details, the specifics, are down lower. All right. Now, of course, a hierarchy can be turned upside down, so sometimes that's confusing. Uh, if you think of abstract languages, abstract programming languages, they go the other way. They go from a root down here, and they grow up and get high-level or upper-level programming languages go up, so they've just turned the hierarchy upside down. <laughs> <laughs> so just watch that, you know, <laughs> but uh, how we have the hierarchy here, more general is going up. All right, um, now we're going to do go right into some code, and we're going to take a look at how we're using uh, constants or variables, functions, and classes, so we can abstract to those things. And we're going to do it with code this time. Sound good? So for code, we will go back to the Zim site and hit code and then copy. And that copies our template, and we'll reduce this down, pop on into lesson04.html, and paste our code. And there we go. We'll call this lesson04. Lesson04 on abstraction. We're bringing in CreateJS and Zim Hey, these are abstractions. We've taken all that code that made containers and events. That is in CreateJS. That's abstract. Abstract mix abstract containers. And then Zim came along and said, oh no, no, we want some more specific things. We're going to make buttons and sliders and dials. These are more specifics. And now we're coming along as coders, using these libraries and frameworks as coders, saying, oh, okay, wait a minute, we're going to take those buttons and dials and put them into this panel. And that's even more specific, and we're going to control this. And so that's how abstraction works. Why build all this again? Abstract that out. Build it once. Why build all this stuff again? Abstract it out. Build it once. And now you're welcome to use it. That's great. And you can continue abstracting as well. And we're going to show you how that can be done right here in this lesson. So we come on down. There's uh, the circle that we're going to get rid of just for now. I haven't really thought this out. What shall we make? I, <laughs> some teacher I am. <laughs> Let's teach a lesson. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, we'll wing it. How about, hey, you guys are students. Well, let's make a pupil. I'll make you. That sound good? Okay, so we could do a rectangle body, or how about a triangle? We haven't seen a triangle in a while. New triangle. And we will dot center that, and let's see if your body is showing up. <laughs> we open in the browser, and uh, there you are. There's a body. And now let's make a head. New circle. Uh, how big should we make the circle? How about 30? And we will make it brown. And we'll dot center that as well. Might be the wrong place. Let's have a look at, at your head. <laughs> it's either got a little pointy hat or maybe it's hunched over doing an exam. <laughs> yes. <laughs> as, uh, maybe I want that head up a little bit. What do you think, huh? Uh, dot center, dot move, MOV, and then we um, zero in the X and minus 40. I'm good. Let's see. Minus 40. Okay. Hey, there you are. It's a pupil. That's great. Uh, but we're ho hopefully there's more than just one of you listening to this. <laughs> we'll, we'll make a little classroom, shall we? So we can copy this. Now, uh, maybe just before we copy this, um, 
<laughs> I don't know. At some point, we're going to want to uh, treat this as one object, right? And usually we would put this in a container. Let's just do that. We'll, we'll make a new container and we'll give this uh, a name. So uh, let body equal a new container. And then we will add the triangle to the container. Add to the, uh, the body like that. And then we're going to center this on the body. And then the container itself, uh, the body here, uh, body dot center on the stage, which is the default. Okay, well, let's see what this looks like now and see if that puts uh, our person in a body. All right, a little bit different in how it's positioned in there, but I think that's probably fine. Now we're gonna copy this code because we want another uh, pupil, another student. So uh, we've already got a body, so this would be, I don't know, let body two or something like that. And then we would add it to body two and add it to body two and uh, body two dot center, but we also want to dot move this over to the right, say. We'll move this over 100, 200, 200, like that. So let's check out our second body that we've made. Two bodies, yay, two people are watching. Well, what if we want three people to watch? Oh, then we copy that and we make three people. Oh, look at all the people watching, oh my. <laughs> so you see how this is a little bit laborious. We're copying this code and putting, doing it over and over again. This one we're gonna min move minus 200. We're gonna minus move it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> we have three pupils all listening and watching this, uh, this lesson. Hello, you guys. All right, what if we changed our mind and then we wanted these people to be, oh, I don't know, say they all raced to class and we wanted, instead of a brown face, we wanted it to be red. That means, oh, we'd have to go, oh, change that to red. Oh, change that to red. Oh, where else is it? Oh, change it to red. Oh. So we save that up and we refresh. Great, now they're all tired students or embarrassed students. <laughs> We've embarrassed you. That is really embarrassing that you had to go in and change that in multiple places. What if we abstracted the color? So we take out the color. And when we do, when we take that out, these things are gonna be more general. These bodies will become more general because we've taken out the specifics. And we do that here. Let color equal what? Uh, red. Oh, well, we'll make another color blue. Now you're cold. Well, or you could be happy. Yellow, yellow, yay, like the sunshine. There we go. So the color is yellow. And we go color here, color here, and color there. Uh, by the way, we could have multiple selected that and changed it all at once. But there we go. Okay, so now this is more general because it can handle any color. We've abstracted the details to here. And watch what happens. Here we are. Yellow. And we go, oh, no, no, I actually want brown. Check this out. I just change that in one place. And I go, there we go. <laughs> so that makes it easier for us. Variables work as a convenience to allow us to set something right here and change the more general things to, to specific down in there. So like we're, um, we're specifying in one place and then these general, uh, I hesitate to call them functions, we're about to make a function, these general things down here, <laughs> they will get specified. Now there's a lot of other things that got repeated aside from just the color brown in there. There's this whole creation, this whole making of a person or making of a pupil. And we've already seen a construct, a programming construct that will do that for us. In the next lesson, we're actually looking at another one that will do it as well. It's called the loop. and We'll be able to repeat something over and over again. But even before we look at loops, there's something we've already used to run a block of code. This could be considered a block of code. Do you remember what we use to run a block of code? That's right, a function. So what we should do is make a function called something like function make 
person, round brackets, there's our function, and we take this code and put it right in there like so. And, ooh, well, let's see. Maybe not all of the code. Okay, let's treat this a bit more carefully. We're going to abstract certain code from here and put it in one place. So what would that be? We don't really need the body dot center, the body. These things are the specifics. Center and moving is the specifics. So really, we just want this stuff right here. Control X and put it up in our function. This is the part that stays the same. Well, actually, I suppose we could center it. Uh, the center is the same as well, so we could take the body and center it up in here as well. Uh, anyway, let's let's just leave it like that. So now we don't need that anymore, and we don't need that anymore. So we're going to have a body, and a body 2, and a body 3, and then we're centering these things and moving them. But Oop. But uh, instead of body, body2, and body3, what we'll do is this. Our function make person will return whatever body we're making. Return the body. Return the body! There we go, like that. Now, we, we saw, briefly, we saw return in our earlier lesson on, on functions, but we didn't really get to use it. We talked about it, how we could make a, a function, calculate an area, and return the area. And hey, that's great. But now here we are seeing it. This function called makePerson is going to return a body. And if that's the case, we can take makePerson here, makePerson, makePerson, and makePerson. Cool, huh? Because makePerson is the body. And then when we make person again, it's the next body. And when we make person again, it's the next body. So note what we got rid of there. Let's undo that. We got rid of, in a sense, body one, body two, body three. Anytime you're numbering things like that, lost it. <laughs> Where'd my make persons go? Anytime you're numbering things like that, um, you should think of abstraction. Most likely, you're not doing it the most efficient way. Okay, so just keep that in mind. All right, so make person, and then we're centering that person, centering, moving. Shall we see if it works? You ready? We save that up, and we refresh here. Sure enough, it seems to be working. Now, nothing really changed. What's with this color, though? Hmm. Do you remember what we should do with the color? Like, we shouldn't rely on the color being passed in from the outside. So there's a color being out, outside this function. Uh, anytime we run a function, it's it's nice to make the function work without needing information from outside. Uh, we're going to see this thing called the class in just a moment. Oh, spoiler, and a class has this thing called encapsulation, but it also applies to a function. So instead of using this magic variable here, how do we get information into the function to tell the function uh, more information? You remember? Right, a parameter, a color. So we collect the parameter here, and then we use the color here. So we don't need that. Now how do we how do we send information into the color parameter? It's right right here. So here's where we would go brown. <laughs> and maybe this one's orange. Uh, we can do it. And this one is uh, green. Oh, not feeling very well. <laughs> so here we are passing. And isn't that neat? Because now our function can do three different colors. It's it's more flexible, this function. And we refresh here. Refresh. Oh, not feeling well. Normal. And I don't know what orange is. <laughs> happy. Colorful. <laughs> Yay. Happy person. All right. So these are the more specifics. This is the more abstract function. In a sense, the details have been abstracted from this and put in here. Okay, abstract, specific. Now, our third level then of, of abstraction is just along the same lines, which is why in JavaScript, uh, well, the third level is classes. 
And in JavaScript, earlier JavaScript, JavaScript up to JavaScript 5, we didn't even have classes per se. We just had functions that acted as classes. And we said, okay, well, hey, really the same thing. Pretty close, darn close anyway. But now in ES6 or JavaScript 6, we do have an official class. So let's talk about how that can be done. And we're going to copy this. And I'm going to comment out all that stuff and paste it down below. So we have this for reference if we need it. Now, a class is what we make an object from. It's kind of, any time we have a make something, most likely you can convert that function into a class. Okay, because uh, when we make something, it's probably making an object. So not all functions, for instance, calculate area, that isn't necessary. We don't have an object in that case. It's a function. It's doing something. But in many cases, when we run a function, um, and half of them say, <laughs> there's a generalization, half of the functions you're going to run could probably be a class. All right, and a class is just uh, in object or in a programming, it's an overlay. It's, it's a metaphorical overlay. We had programming before and programming had functions and variables. Got it? Programming basics have functions and variables. And then object-oriented programming came along and said, hey, let's make a class and we can make objects from the class. And that was an overlay. And really the objects are just results of a function. And indeed, the properties of an object are just a variable stored in the object. They're stored on the object, that, that kind of thing. And, and methods are just functions that are stored on the object. So it's, a, it's an overlay that helps us understand or almost like act like real life. Here, I'll show you, for instance. We're going to make this just seem, hey, pretty real. You ready? Let's make it a class. So instead of function, we now have a class keyword, which is cool. There it is, class, and we don't call it make person because we're going to do that in another way. We could just call it a class person. We don't have round brackets. We're going to say, you see how the body here is a container? Well, we're going to make this person start off as a container. So we say extends a container like that. So class person extends a container. That means it's going to start off as a Zim container. It will have all the properties, all the methods, all the, all the functionality of a container. Okay. Now down here we no longer need a body because the, the person is, is the body, <laughs> the container. All right. But one thing that we do have to do is make a constructor. Constructor. Isn't that cute? This is what runs when we make a new person. So let me just show you, I suppose, since we've set it, a new person, we, we're going to do that too. Instead of make person, it is give me a new person. And instead of make person here, it is give me a new person. And here is a new person. So what this does is it calls the class and will run the constructor by default. Now, what goes in here gets collected in the constructor right here, color, like so. So this is close to being ready, but instead of add to body, we have another thing to look at, and that's uh, what's called the keyword this, because the body, and we don't return the body anymore because this whole person is the body. The container was the body, or the body was the container. Now we're saying this whole person is a container. That's what this is. So when we make a new triangle, we add it to this, which is the, the container. And when we make a new circle, we add it to this. Now, more specifically, this refers to this object right here. So as soon as we say new person like that, that's now the container to start off with. And then the new triangle gets added to that container and the new circle gets added to the container. So this refers to the specific object that was just created. So when I call it here, this will be this container or our person object. Okay, uh, so this is an object. This is the class right here. Class, new class makes an object. And the keyword this 
refers to the object that is made in each case. All right, well, anyway, don't worry too much about that. As a matter of fact, most people at your uh, level of learning don't get to see um, don't get to see custom classes like this. It would come in the second semester. <laughs> but now that we've known about abstraction, now that we see abstraction and we've been talking about all of these abstract levels, classification and composition and stuff like that, you're a little bit more ready to have a look. All right, you don't need to know everything about it right now. We're just showing you some principles of abstraction. Now it's close. There's one more thing. CreateJS, which is what Zim is built on, needs the containers constructor to be called. We have a constructor here. The containers constructor needs to be called as well. So that's done with super. And hey, we've seen the word super. Super means my parent. If person extends a container, it means it inherits from the container. Oh, mama, papa, my parent, you give me everything I have. I start off with you. I'm going to call you to, to activate you. And that's what this is doing. It's calling the super class. <laughs> All right. So um, for CreateJS to work properly and in, in Zim and CreateJS to work properly, we need to call the super class. And then we can go on and add the thing that that will Calling the superclass makes the container that we're using here. It makes this. All right, so let's save her up and see if it works. Why don't we, uh, instead of a green alien, we will make a blue alien. This is like the chameleon alien. And instead of orange, we'll make it red. This is the fellow who's huffing and puffing to get to class. And here's Mr. Laidback in the center. All right, all right, let's try her out. There we go, the huffing and puffing, the chameleon alien, and the laid-back person in the class. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Isn't that neat? And you know how I said class? Isn't that exciting? Like, you guys are in the class, your pupils in the classroom, in the class. And a class is called that because you are a bunch of people who all act in the same way. You have similarities. You're all learning how to code JavaScript. You are the class of people learning how to, to code JavaScript. Interesting. So that's what a class is. It's commonalities. It's things in common. And any of the specifics we can pass in and adjust the commonality. And by doing that, we make this in only one place, and we can use it as many times as we want. So in the next lesson, in the next JavaScript lesson, where we're learning JavaScript and um, with creative coding, we're going to see a nice quick way that we can make three people, or monsters, or whatever, three of them, or a hundred of them, or three thousand of them in the same amount of code. <laughs> that sounds pretty cool, doesn't it? All right, almost as cool as this, huh? One, One. go. Touchy. And touch the wrong target. <laughs> Touchy soon turned to grabby. <laughs> Squeezy. <laughs> Kicky. Yeah, that's the game Touchy that was made with the types of code we're doing. Now, note we call this creative coding. It doesn't necessarily mean visual creation. You know, uh, a great visual is super. That is conceptual creativity. What you just saw there, we've moved the game to outside the device rather than inside the device. I hope you hang around and check out all what we've been doing in Zim and some of the philosophy behind it. Have a look through that creativity framework from the last video. Uh, this is the end of the abstract abstraction or abstract video, but that doesn't mean it's the end of abstraction. You'll be abstracting <laughs> your whole life. Woo -hoo! I am Dr. Abstract. Have a great day or night. Ciao.